Well, welcome, everyone. I am here with my brother. This is my brother. And I don't think we look similar. Everyone apparently is, li we're literally like 70% we look similar. Just one has more hair, one has less hair. And he asked, who's John Travolta? So someone said he looks like John, a mixture of you and John Travolta. I know the name, I just can't put a face to it. John Travolta's in, um... I know he's in a movie. <sighs> he's in that one movie that I don't know. Um, you might have to come forward a little bit so it's, you're like in focus. But uh, so we're going to spend the next hour ish answering some home buying questions. So, my brother is a real estate agent. Uh, you got licensed how long ago? Um, October of 2020. October of 2020. Been so. thriving in the real estate <laughs> 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 and suffering a mixture of both. Um, what's it like being a new agent in COVID world? Um, it's kind of ironic because people say it's, oh, it's so difficult right now. There's so many homes there. There's no homes for sale and there's so many buyers. Uh, it's making it really difficult for agents who have been around the block for a long time because what they're used to is it's kind of slow paced. They can do things on their own time. And now all of a sudden they have to go out at, you know, eight, 9 PM at night. Whereas where I came into it, this is all I've known so far. So right now I'm going through the process of Everything was so fast. I was fast paced, you know, waking up at seven in the morning. Uh, the showings don't start until 9 a.m. around here anyways. Um, but whether it was showing at 9 a.m. or getting home at 9, 10 p.m. at night, that's all I knew. So stuff's starting to slow down now. Um, and it's really weird because that's all I've known so far. Uh, so it's kind of difficult transitioning back from high pace to slow pace, which everybody yeah. knows. I've been doing this for 20 years, so I'm a veteran. Yeah. <laughs> Vivian said both of you are handsome, so Vivian's going after both. Oh, and uh, I feel like people thought I had. <laughs> you're looking up <laughs> John Travolta pictures. I know, I know who it is now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, his, did he go bald? Uh, you have to show that. Put it up next, put it up next to you. Uh, let's see. See, everyone thought I had a deep voice. But uh, I think he may beat by a couple octaves. It's not as soothing, though. Yeah, is that is that it? Um, Justin, good to see you. Jennifer, welcome. And we're working off of one mic today, so sorry if the audio is a little a little hard to hear. Just uh, just turn it up. You'll be fine. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Desiree, since COVID, is there a lot of first time programs or grants to help with down payment? Uh, in Maryland, I don't know. I don't know any programs in Maryland specifically. Um, there is a website called, mm, I'll look it up later and put it in the chat, but it uh, helps with down payment assistance, but I don't know of any that have happened like because of COVID necessarily. Um, buy now or wait, the inevitable question. How are you gonna navigate this on the um, real estate side? It's hard There's, because I've only been in it for you know, less than a year. Um, so I can't speak of markets. Nobody, everybody makes, you know, millions going on YouTube and saying millions. <laughs> I'm sure there's some out there who are, but the saying buy now or wait because the bubble's going to pop. Nobody knows when it's going to pop. Nobody knows if it's going to stay steady or if it's going to go up. Um, really, as someone said in the chat earlier, buy when you're ready to buy. You know, it's all dependent upon your situation in the house. If you guys feel like your family or yourself, uh, is wanting to buy a house and you know from his channel that there are benefits and sometimes it does make sense to wait it's really dependent upon your personal situation i can't tell you buy now or wait it out um, the realtor is always saying buy now <laughs> we're gonna i mean that's how we get paid uh but it's he's really already planning the commission check right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> but really it's, it's your own decision um, it is a great feeling the first time i bought my house was in 2019 uh, it was a great feeling. Sorry. It was a great feeling going from, well, one, obviously growing up being my parents' house, uh, and then renting for a while and having that transition from renting, nothing feels like it's yours. You're afraid to paint the walls, do anything. Now I can go in my house and really, if I want to, I could just take a poop in the middle of the living room floor. I don't advise it. Uh, my wife's watching. Have you done that? Is that why you replaced the flooring? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My I, wife's I, watching right now, and she's probably laughing because uh, she knows that's something I would really I'll say, say, so when I walked in and you were replacing flooring, it's because of that. All right. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Um, and so you also have a YouTube channel. I do. Right? Uh, I have it linked in the description if you want to check that out. So far, two subscribers. 
So we're, we're, <laughs> we're bringing it in there. I'm one. I'm one of those, and I might have just subscribed like 10 minutes before this. So let's see if we can get three. Three is going to be an, yeah. three is a good start. Um, you got to hit three at some point. Um, Barbara, can not having a rent payment history hinder you from buying a home? Usually not. Usually lenders don't look at your rental history. Um, recently, Fannie Mae did. <laughs> sorry, look at another call. Recently, um, Fannie Mae did say rent history can also help a conventional loan approval, but it would only help. It's not going to like hinder anything. Um, so you should be you should be good. Uh, somebody said they had a crush on my stepmom. Any <laughs> suggestions? <laughs> Uh, I was taking a drink when I read that. That's for the After Dark episode. Um, Adel, I am considering buying my first home. What is the first step to buying a home? From a real estate side, I would tell you to definitely get pre-approved or um, get pre-qualified. Everyone's going to tell you that. It's all over Kyle's channel. Um, the benefits of doing it, which I'm sure he's talked about before, because on the real estate side, it's very frustrating. Uh, we have clients who come to us and they say, hey, I want to purchase a house. Uh, let's go see this house and say it's you know $250,000. Well, they figure out that they're going to go see this house, which you can do. You can write an offer on the house uh, without having any type of pre-approval or talking to any lender. But the seller is not going to take your offer serious. In today's market, you're looking at homes that are getting 10 to 12 offers in this area. And honestly, six of them, I mean, probably 60% to 70% actually have uh, pre-approval attached to them. The sellers are really only looking at the pre-approval with that because they know that you've gone through the finances, the debts, everything that goes into that, which I'm not going to speak like I know because I don't know a single thing. I don't know either. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, but I would definitely say speaking to a lender first or whoever is going to work on your mortgage, speak to them first, figure out what you can afford. Because uh, oftentimes what I'm seeing is people are going into houses and I work a lot of first time home buyers. Um, that's mostly what I'm doing because my age group is really the 20 to 32 year old. Um, so what I'm seeing is people think they can afford, they go on Zillow and they see a house and it's listed for a certain price and they say, you know, oh, I can afford that. Um, you need to talk to a lender because even though you may think you can afford that payment, you have other stuff that comes into it. That's just the mortgage on the house. You're gonna have interest, you're gonna have utilities, you're gonna have everything else. And just cause you can afford it, doesn't mean that you're gonna be comfortable with your finances. So that's my advice on that. <laughs> So, someone said, y'all look like brothers. We're what? not. It's surprising. We're not brothers. It's crazy. No. Um, see, I told you, somebody, as we were coming up here, I was like, somebody's going to comment, you skip my question and I'm leaving. <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> oh my gosh. As if I can answer every question. Um, oh, doo -doo -doo, oh, Jennifer went to my channel. Ooh, nice, Jennifer. Uh Frank, you said I'm buying a home with leased solar. What steps need to be done on the buyer lender side? I am not sure with solar at all because that is just not something that we do in Ohio at all. Uh, it's cloudy most of the time. Um, so unfortunately, I don't know. I wish I had a better answer for that. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Any good grants or down payment assistance programs that work with an FHA loan? Pretty much all down payment assistance programs work with the FHA loans. Um, as far as good, you're really just going to have to look at like what is available to you locally. There aren't a lot of like national down payment assistance programs. Um, they all tend to be more from a state, county, local um, housing authority perspective. Um, Jennifer's got a crush on you. I've seen her before. <laughs> Jennifer's always here. She's Jennifer always was in there when I was in the hospital. And I was typing to you and she was talking. She said, congratulations. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, I'll say, do you, do you want to tell people that you have a child? <laughs> I already told them. <laughs> I think you, you said you'd think you look more tired on video. Yeah, I definitely got some uh, baggy eyes going. Don't, don't I say that, but I said most of the day. Wait, why? What's the prayers for Javier? I'm confused. Is there something new that I don't know about? I feel like I talked to Javier the other day. If there is, I don't know. Somebody, let me know. Um. Hmm. Julie, are there any alternatives to buying when the partner in the process who has the large, far larger income can't apply because he can't show 
tax records. Um, the alternative is buying over as process of learning. Yeah, so um, a bank statement loan is probably your only choice there. If uh, if there isn't a large amount of net income because there's been a lot written off on taxes, um, then you could do a bank statement loan while they'll average either business or personal bank deposits, normally over um, 12 to 24 months. So uh, that would probably be the best route. You're gonna have a larger down payment and higher interest rate. Yeah, um, oh yeah, Javier's over COVID, uh, if that's what we were, we were mentioning. Yeah, no, Javier's uh, better now. So yeah, he was he was quarantined for ten days, I think, is what the the thing is. Um, Got the virus. Who knows the most guitar chords? I know game? absolutely zero. I don't even think I can play an instrument. Yeah, Molly in Dayton. Well, hello, John Travolta of Greece. <laughs> And Stacy's playing Black Ops. I love it. I looked up the picture. I mean, the, if he did, actually did the shaved head, I could see it probably. If you do the, yeah. But right now, I just look like a fuzzy teddy bear. You don't look like he. You don't look like young John Travolta, which is probably a good thing. Young John Travolta kind of looks like one of those like wax figures. Um, ooh, Angelica, good <clears throat> good to see you as well. I don't think I gave you a shout out yet. Um. I just got to the crush on my stepmom again. Um, oh no! And Dan said you could still poop in a rented home, which is that's true. Dan, you can absolutely poop in a rented home. Um, I would say you probably get a little security deposit taken out, like if you leave it there for when you move out. But if it was worth it to you for that cleanup fee, I would say go ahead. <laughs> David, that's the advice that you're getting today. Uh, I bought my first home in March at 4.24 and appraised 269. I bought it at 220, put 12 down. I want to remodel now. Should I refinance now? Uh, it's more of a personal choice than it is anything else. Um, interest rates for a refinance are probably going to be lower than 4.24. I don't imagine you're going to get that high with a refinance. So I say go for it. If that's what works for you, just make sure the repairs you put in are something that you feel like you're gonna get value back from it or you're gonna be in the home for a period of time. Um, just don't go in like overboard with the renovations if they're not going to match. If you're if you're really trying to get the money back for the renovations, just don't go overboard and uh, and you should be okay. Um, I think I keep scooting back in here. Do, 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 do. Vivian, uh, pre-approval has expired. Should I go back to the loan officer with updated documents or should I wait until I find a house? Um, I, it's probably not a huge deal that you would have to get, uh, you'd have to like re-update the pre-approval. Probably not that big of a deal. Um, you can if you want to. I personally would just wait until you find a house. As long as there's been nothing that like big has changed, uh, you should be fine. I do have one on that. Um, there was a listing agent that one of my clients had an expired pre-approval. Uh, they were kind of in the same boat saying, we don't feel like we're gonna renew it. Um, I said, okay, we'll go ahead and submit the offer. The listing agent actually contacted me and said, you know, this is expired. So there are agents oh. that will actually look and see, you know, if it's expired. If it's by a couple of days or a week, I would say, yeah, you're probably safe. Um, but if it's like, I got this in February and now it's November, um, I would say there's a lot that can happen in the meantime between those months and people will probably take it more seriously. Hey, if, you, if you get in February, oh, okay. see a house in November. Sometimes I feel like I, Tune out a little bit. <laughs> I was trying to figure out if I said the months backwards. <laughs> uh, is it good to put your property tax into a separate account instead of an escrow account? You can if you want to, um, if that's going to help with your budgeting. So uh, I imagine what you're talking about is like waiving an escrow account. So for most people, they have their taxes and insurance in an escrow account where the lender actually collects it monthly and then will pay it out to the insurance company or uh, county, either annually or semi annually or however that's handled in your county. Um, if you use like some sort of budgeting app, then you don't have to do something like that. Uh, the app you need a budget is really great. So you don't have to have a bunch of separate accounts, but if that's helpful for you, separate account works, if that's going to help you not touch it, but anything that's going to help make sure if you're putting aside money for taxes and insurance that you're not going to accidentally cut into that. And then the tax bill comes due and you're not ready for it. Um, then I think it's fine to me. An extra account seems like a little bit of a hassle. Put up air. Put up what? Air. Error? Right there. Oh. 
Should you always be pre-approved before looking for a house? No. You can look at a house anytime. Um, I know it's kind of Real ironic. True. It's ironic as I'm saying this. I keep on saying, get pre-approved before you talk to us. Do you have to? No. Um, but like I talked about before, a seller is not going to take your offer serious. They're not. Anybody can make an offer, but if you can't get financed, then that offer is nothing and it falls apart anyways. Um, so I would say in today's market, how fast it is, by the time you find a house that you really like and you apply to get pre-approved, the house is under contract. I mean, houses here, or a few months ago, they were within 24 hours, unless they did the whole entire law review offers in seven days, and that was kind of frustrating. But I would definitely say in today's current trend, at least here in Ohio, definitely get pre-approved before you look. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I'll, I'll concede to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know you needed that approval. <laughs> oh my gosh. Javier, I'm glad that you're alive and well. When people were saying like prayers for Javier, I was like, what happened? I didn't, didn't know that anything happened to you. But uh, I think they were mentioning just COVID. So um, let's see. I'm my trying to understand his comment. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen that meme? Oh. The meme where it's like, uh, like, can we get McDonald's and yeah, and your there's mom's food like, at home. yeah, there's food at home. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I think he's just being dumb. So, uh, am my food at home? I think your food at home. Okay, nice. <laughs> it's only because he doesn't know you. Uh, What's up, Javier? My first time on your live. Oh, well, welcome. We live in Miami, Florida, and we're looking to live in Central Florida. First time home there. Well, welcome. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, looking into a multifamily home to rent, but only have 75000 in my savings and need some advice on what are the steps I need to take so I don't just put the whole amount on a place. Um, if you're looking into multifamily to, now when you say to rent, I mean you imagine like you're going to purchase and then rent out. Um, what a lot of people do is house hack with an FHA loan. You can do 3.5% down. So... Like, what is that? 75,000 divided by 0 0.035 is, yeah, that's, it would go above the FHA limit. Um, so that's an option where you can do 3.5% down on an FHA loan. Your only other option is with a multifamily, if it's going to be like an investment property, you're going to end up paying quite a bit of money. Um, so I would try to look at maybe FHA and see if that's a good option for you and then rent it out. You can always refinance later if you want to. But uh, then you have some extra cash for repairs or maintenance funds or whatever uh, if you need it. <laughs> I said read the comments. I am reading the comments. Don't go call me a coward. Come make me cry. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Do you think people will stay in their houses longer since it's expensive to buy a new house? I think it's offsetting. <clears throat> I think... Um, what you're seeing a lot right now is people are buying their home for a certain amount. The home's going for, you know, typically twenty to thirty thousand dollars over. At least it was here, you know, earlier in the year. Um, so they bought the house for cheaper anyways. All of a sudden, now they're getting all this profit back into it, and they can kind of afford to bring it into a new house. I understand they're going to have um, that new house is going to be inflated anyways, but I really don't see it affecting people. I don't see them staying in their house. I mean, that is. Part of the problem we're having is the inflation so high people are staying in their house, which is causing the seller's market. Um, but I would say it's starting to die down. People are starting to move more. I like it. You just want to answer all the questions from now on, and I can sit here. Uh, do you want me to answer Angelica's? Please keep the chat clean. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, wait, we already answered that one. Um, we have a lot of solar in California. Yeah, and the thing is, I know there are like solar credits that uh, that can work with mortgages. I just am really not familiar. I've never run into it um, again because the weather here causes like seasonal depression for most people. So no one's trying to capture the solar in Ohio. I've seen one house that was listed have solar panels, uh, but they placed it really weird. I'm guessing the sun hit it in the right position, but it was on the front of the house. Like the whole entire front siding was solar panels. Like not on the roof, not just in the backyard. It was really weird. I'm just not used to it in Ohio, but I'm sure in California it's I feel pretty like, common. I feel like I've seen solar panels on um, 
uh, they're always on like really bad houses. They're on like <laughs> they'll be like on a like a half torn down mobile home. And I'm like, why do you have solar panels on here? <laughs> uh, I'm a mechanic. I do work on the side. Could I use that income as long as I report it on my Schedule C? Yep, Schedule C and two year history of the income is what you're going to need to be able to use that. And they're going to use your net. I'm sorry. They're going to use your gross personal income, which is your net business income. So just keep that in mind, um, that if you write off a bunch of expenses, that does bring down the bottom line of uh, what's actually going to be reported to your personal income. Roxana said, hi, Kyle and the brother. <laughs> hello. I was actually saying hello. I was typing it. Oh, were you? Yeah. Did I not put your name in here? I put your name in the description, right? Uh, Michael. Michael. Ya boy. I should put ya boy. Um... Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see what questions we have next. Uh, any tips in making an offer with a loan when you're competing against all cash buyers? Is that, are there a lot of cash buyers around here? There's been quite a few. There's been more than I thought there would be. Um, I have heard that there is a company out there that they will front the money uh, to make you a cash offer, but the interest rate is extremely high. Uh, the only reason they're doing that is because people can say they're a cash offer. Their offer gets looked at more. Uh, I don't advise doing it. It kind of feels like loan sharking to me. But Are you yeah. talking about the ones where they do like the six month? No. So the I'm not sure exactly which company it is. Um, I'm sure if I mention it, it and I'm talking bad about it, I get in trouble or something. But there's a company out there that you actually finance through them, but they provide the cash to make the offer. Divi? I don't know. No. Oh. Yeah, and I've looked into making a video on some of those programs and looking them more in depth. Um, they, I don't, I don't know. I haven't done enough research on them to see if they're how how good they would be. Um, did you talk about? What, so, what would you recommend for someone going up against cash buyers without something like that program? Or is there any like is there anything <clears throat> they can do to make their offer? Um, you just get a little stronger. And this is going back from a couple months time. You can't ask for anything on our offers. Um, I had a client that we finally got our 13th offer under contract. Uh, so it's not, you're gonna see the first house you love and it, all of a sudden it's yours. Um, there's, it's definitely a seller's market. There's things that you can do and you can talk to your agent and you can say, hey, what can I do to make my offer more appealing? Uh, your agent will know there's stuff as far as, you know, seller paid closing costs, not asking for title insurance, not asking for a home warranty. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to not kind of feel like you're asking for an arm and a leg uh, and kind of have an edge still. Um, I hate to say this, but a lot of times... Canceled. It, Immediately canceled. What is? I don't know. I don't know what you're going to say. Okay. Um, for me, I've done it in the past. It's so hard to get an offer accepted. I only get paid when it closes, so sometimes dropping a commission a little bit is uh, getting a client's offer accepted, which I hate to do because... People are like, oh, you're dropping your commission. You're looking bad on all the other agents because now agents expect you to drop theirs. I don't care about the other agents. I'd rather get paid something than nothing. Uh, that's just how I feel. Plus, it benefits the client, so it's a win-win. I like it. Um, can you do? Can you buy a home with FHA and use part of the loan for rehab without doing it two or three K? No, unfortunately. There's uh, two different kinds of two or three Ks, but uh, if you're wanting an actual rehab loan, you will have to get a two or three K. Um, you can do something like a repair escrow, but it's not actually a necessarily a loan for the money. Um, or at least not in the conventional sense of like being able to do rehab work the way that you want it to, to, to go. Uh, what do you guys think about FHA right now? I know it was like a red flag before the seller, before for the sellers. Uh, so you're in Boston. Yeah, so it's tough, and it's it's also going to depend a lot on the market. So Boston is definitely a little bit bigger than Dayton, Ohio is. <laughs> um, so like in our market, we're a very heavy FHA market um, compared to other maybe uh, larger cities. And so FHA is still not super favorable, but it is a lot more common around here. So it's very common for someone to use like an FHA loan and to also ask for seller credits on their uh, contract as well, where that might not work in your uh, your market. And so it really is, it is tough if that's what you can qualify for right now. Um, the one thing I would say is if 
you only have access to an FHA loan is to talk with your loan officer about, uh, and not like a, in a combative way, but like, hey, can you help me explain why I'm in an FHA loan and what do I need to do to qualify for conventional? Because there are a lot of lenders, I was talking with someone the other day, who had like a 700 score and they had all the money for the down payment and they didn't have a high debt to income ratio and they got an FHA quote from a lender. I don't know why. Like there was no reason that they needed to be in an FHA loan. Um, and so sometimes I think we just don't wanna like blindly accept something from a lender if they're like here, FHA is what you qualify for. So maybe ask, can you help me explain or can you help me understand why FHA is what I qualify for and is there anything I can do to get conventional? Because for a lot of people, Sometimes it only takes two to three months worth of work on your credit to be able to qualify conventional, and you're gonna be able to put in a much stronger offer with conventional um, than with FHA. And on the other side too, there are still a lot of people winning with FHA loans, um, at least again, around here and in a lot of other markets. Um, but then there are also a lot of markets where FHA is just kind of thrown to the bottom if you have a ton of these offers being put in there as well. Um, da, da, da. Can you recommend any lenders that do manual underwriting? Um, there's one lender that does pretty much everything by the guidelines. There are a lot of lenders that kind of put extra rules on top of the rules that are made. One lender that does everything pretty much no guidelines or no extra guidelines is uh, Carrington. They're a real pain to work with. <laughs> like they can be very slow and clunky, but that could be an option uh, to to explore. There are also tons of other lenders. It depends on your like why you need the manual underwriting. Um, if it's just because you have no credit score, then there are tons of lenders that do that. But if it's because you have uh, credit that's a little bit on the rougher side, it can be difficult to find a lender who's going to do manual underwriting for you um, in that way. Like Javier's comment. Where? Like Howard. Everybody's calling you a coward. Who else called me a coward? Javier. Someone oh. else did earlier. They can't say it. It's, it's too true. It's going to hurt my feelings. Um, would it be okay to put a whole property here? Uh, would it be okay to put a whole year of property taxes in escrow, or should it only be a few months? Um, also, can I use my own insurance company and pay them directly, bundling with auto insurance? Uh, so answer the first question. Can I put a whole year of property taxes in escrow? Um, so the escrow is gonna be defined by the lender. And so normally it's gonna be not a full year, most of the time it's gonna be probably two to four months worth of property taxes in escrow. Um, oh my gosh, my wallpaper changed. Uh, and then you can use your own insurance company if you're waiving escrows and pay them directly. Um, you absolutely can do that. And you can also bundle with your auto insurance even if you're not waiving your escrow account. Your lender or your Insurance company can still do that. Any update on the tax credit for twenty five thousand? No, probably not for a while. <laughs> I thought they were supposed to have that out by like summer or fall. Um, no. I mean, if they if they are, I haven't heard anything about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine we're probably not gonna. Now that are, are you thinking of the fifteen thousand dollar one? Maybe the fifteen thousand dollar tax credit is the one that became a bill. The, the one for 25000 as the down payment assistance is more of a talking point than anything else. Um, but it does get confusing. They keep throwing these like housing initiatives out there and then <laughs> we don't hear anything about them. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. I'm a W-2 contract worker. Lenders treating me like self-employed and denying my application. Um, any advice? from get a new job. Well, I would never get, sell you to get a new job in this situation. I would just say maybe talk to another lender and see why they're, why are they treating you like self-employed? Um, now with W-2, even though it is contract work, it depends on how you're paid. Um, contract work, since contract work does expire, it doesn't necessarily have to be treated as self-employed, um, but you do have inconsistency in your income. And so they have to look at income consistency. So if you're treated like self-employed, they'd be looking at like your actual expenses, which I don't imagine they are. Uh, do you see any questions that pop out here? I'm trying to get like less mortgage questions and more- um, You're further up than I am. More real estate questions. As much as I'm sure you, you wanna answer the mortgage questions. I did see. Oh, Jennifer's, uh, Jennifer says Javier's trolling. 
Because Kyle's Javier stupid. trolling, never. Javier would never troll. <laughs> That's not like him. Um, I did see that Goddess Cole got her real estate license. Ooh, congrats. Uh, what's up, fellas? I'm looking to purchase a home in six to 12 months. I will have to go FHA, which is fine for a starter home, but as soon as I plan to propose to my girl, well, it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> oh, she's not watching. Uh, how should I go about juggling this? I'm thinking of going the layaway route, just so my credit's not ram. Uh, this also prevent me from dropping a huge sum all at once. Cash. Wait, I'm confused. Would it? What does this mean? He's talking about financing a ring, and then also going for a house. Is what I think you're <laughs> offering. Oh, I thought they were talking about. Okay. I was about to say, like, I'm pretty sure you can't put a house on the layaway if that's what you're asking. No, this isn't Walmart. Okay, you're talking about... Financing a ring and financing a house. Oh, that makes more sense. I don't know, you, you're you the one who's married. I've never bought a ring. Oh. Okay, we'll treat it like a car. Would you go finance a car when you're in Is the Is that process? how much you paid for a ring? Is Kayla watching this? I mean, Is that how much? A used car. Dollar amounts. What are the dollar amounts? A used car. It was twenty-five cents at the little, little quarter <laughs> change machine. Um, no, that's that's more of a, kind of a shave question. down ring pop. Yeah, I don't know. Would you finance a car right like when you're about to start home searching? As far as your credit being ran, not an issue. Your credit being ran is going to impact your score like five points, and it will pop back within thirty to sixty days. Um. As far as the cash route, if that's what you're mainly concerned about, then that's really gonna be more of a, a personal choice. If you feel like paying, paying cash in that way is then gonna prevent you from being able to purchase a home, then that's what I would maybe start thinking like, ah, I don't, maybe it doesn't make sense to, to spend that money in cash, but you're saying six to 12 months. Uh, I imagine you, you'll probably be able to make that money back in six to 12 months. I don't know what kind of ring you're buying. Um, What's the going rate for rings these days? Like 30 bucks, 35? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can spend as little as you want or you can go exorbitant. Um, like 50. $50? $50, yeah. Uh, DL said house first, ring second. Um, I did. What if you did an engagement house instead of an engagement ring? Yeah. I mean, that would work for me. Yeah, ask Kayla, see if she would like that. I did. She was like, yeah, we didn't get any rings. I just got this house. And I actually financed my ring a few months before we bought, but we didn't know we were going to buy. So I think I got the ring in maybe like (laughs) March or something. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Thanks, Javier, for my ring fund. Now I need someone to give it to. Yeah. Is that you? Is that what this is? Is this Javier you're proposing now? Is that what this is? Ring pop. Yeah, what am I going to buy with $50? What kind of rings can I get? There's got to be good engagement rings for 50 bucks. Come on. I mean, the Moist Night rings, you can't really tell the difference. The Moist rings? Moist. Moist. Ring? moist. I'm looking up engagement rings. In moist Night. Engagement rings for 50 bucks. We could totally do this. <gasps> no. 1200 No, 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 no. Do you think that's bad? <laughs> no, not not <laughs> not actually. <laughs> Wait. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We found it. Here what's we it go. What's it from? Alibaba. Let me see. Um, uh, make. Let me make something new. Let me add a screen share here. Yes. Look at the. Look at this. Seven ninety nine, and we got one whole star. Come on. What else? What else do you want in here? I'm just curious what the review is. Actually, there's you're, three reviews. You're telling me if I gave that to somebody, they're not going to be like, wow, <laughs> I'm swept <laughs> off my feet. Take me now. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of... Javier, if you are proposing, um, I will just give you his address. It's a lot of um, lot If of you diamonds. want, I will go ahead and say it here on the live stream for <laughs> No. <you>. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I've already dealt with one stalker. I don't need more. Come on, look at all this. I, multiple. Here's the deal. One ring, you lose it, and then your relationship's over. Right? Because if, if it was about the ring, the relationship was fragile anyway. Right? I think mine was 
$50. Yeah. So if the relationship's built on the ring, it's a fragile relationship and it's going to fall apart if you lose the ring. And so, but if I can buy multiple rings for multiple wives. For multiple <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to yeah, I'm about to sister wives this. That's the strategy. Isn't that the show Sister Wives? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get so much hate for this. Um, mm -mm. Ideally, I want to propose whenever we close in the house and first get the keys or in front of the door. Yeah. Okay, so you were talking about rings. That makes sense. That makes way more sense than what I was thinking you were talking about buying your house on layaway. Just don't miss a payment if you do get the ring beforehand. Oh, gosh, yeah. I know someone that did yeah. a... Uh, they're paying off a ring and they missed a ring payment and a... I think it was like a... Dick's Sporting Goods or some type of like sportsman's shop. Uh, they missed both payments and it really affected their credit quite a bit. Kyle left, so I'm taking over. I can't find my water bottle. Did Javier send $50 or is he starting on GoFundMe? No, he sent $50. Uh, yeah, Gigi said, you can't lose a house like you lose a piece of jewelry, right? I can't get a house stuck down the sink. So, come at me. Uh, what's the minimum loan amount FHA lends? So, there is no minimum for FHA, but most lenders won't lend below around $40,000. It just becomes really difficult. There's a lot of uh, regulations around the cost and relating to the, the loan amount as well. And so, it's really difficult for lenders to give loans below $40,000. So uh, there isn't a hard uh, minimum. Um, and some lenders may have artificial minimums. I know of some lenders who won't do loans below 100000 So um, the lowest loan size I've done is, I believe it was thirty two or 35000 And it was um, a nightmare. It was a little bit of a pain. Um, wait, what's a diamond skin? What's diamond skin? I just got diamond skin. It's for Call of Duty. Oh, okay. I play Call of Duty, by the way. Kyle doesn't understand the uh, the AUG term. Uh, I gonna say I don't know what AUG is either. Yeah. Um, no, Angelica, we can leave those. We can. It's okay if people are allowed to say bad words. It's fine. It's fine. Um, oops. Um. Can a realtor qualify for home? Sure can. Ooh, Olivia's in here. What's up, dude? Where? I don't know. She what do you mean? She's a rooms woman. Oh. Where do, how do I not see you? Because you're at the top. That's probably why. What's up, Olivia? Um. Can a second income be considered if it's over 12 months? Second income, you're going to need two years, unfortunately. I wish there was a way around that. Um, is there a, am I available for a phone consult? Not at the moment. Um, like directly call you? I guess so. Did you hear that? The Oompa Loompas? I didn't know there was anyone here. Um, <laughs> thanks, uh, Aquamarine Jeans. For the super chat, eight eighty four. That's a very yeah, I'm, specific I'm just number. Curious how you got eight eighty four. Um, Is it for the ring fund? Oh, was yeah. that that was for the first ring? Wasn't that for the ring that was? Uh, I don't know. That was one of the rings. Well, there's also like shipping and tax. So if you have more, just <laughs> I'm just kidding. Send me more. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're building up the ring fund here. Um. Just passed my exam Friday. Congratulations. I think we might have... I think you already brought that up, didn't you? Yeah. Um, yeah, you're pretty far behind. Yeah. Also, keep in mind, like, I can't answer every single question. I know people get mad, and I don't really know how to help in that way. Um, I literally cannot answer every single one as much as I am trying. Like, you see these questions, I can't. <laughs> so I, I told you, every once in a while, people get mad, and I don't know... How to help in that, in that way. You've already answered it. This one? 
Mm, I don't think so. No. Uh, to make your <clears throat> offer more appealing when going against cash offers, get creative. Uh, offer to purchase appliances for the new home or offer to pay for the first month's mortgage on the new home. Interesting. Can you do that? I'm sure you can do anything right into a contract, just do an addendum. Um, I wouldn't advise it just because I don't want to write the offer and someone say they didn't pay it because they didn't feel like it, they got the house. Uh, always... And then you find yourself having to go to court. So I probably wouldn't do it. But I keep leaning. Do. I keep leaning up here, and then it puts you. It blurs you into. Oh no, it's got you now. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Don't get him. Just me. Um, it's all that grease you're putting on the camera. <laughs> got a grease head. Grease. Grease head. What are you talking about? You both sound very calm when talking, and you know that lamp behind you looks like you have a hat on. Oh, you got a tell this way. It's very hard to do that backwards. Um, yeah, you want to start an ASMR channel? I don't know what I would do. You just whisper. I know what that is, but... Get up right in there and whisper. Give them what they want. It's on the spot. I wouldn't know what to say. Get, <laughs> Just get in there and get it. No, I'll pass on that one. You just, yeah, you like that. That's what, that's what they want. That's what... <laughs> <laughs> it could be like... <laughs> I don't want people to take it the wrong way. Like, oh, he's seduced talking me. That's what ASMR is. You come up here and... You like that? Is that what you like? <laughs> so you have to do just the fizz. I don't know if you can hear it. Shh. Just the fizz. Oh. Sponsored by... Oh, my gosh. Coke. There was a good question that I saw. Um, it's down at the bottom, so everybody's going to get pissed off that I skipped down. Do you want to put it up? I'm sorry, which one? Edward Gonzalez. Edward. Uh, wait, where? Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. One above it. Okay. Is it wrong to tell your loan officer and real estate agent that you're pretty much done searching for the house right now? Um, I would definitely say be upfront and honest because there's nothing that we hate more than someone beating around the bush. Um, loan officers, they sit at their desk all day. They don't do anything. They do this. What? Um, just texting all day. Us real estate agents, we don't want to get the, ro the run around, um, nor do we want to just beat around the bush with the client. Be upfront, be honest. That's how I like to be with the client. Just say, hey, if you're looking for a house, um, the stuff you're looking for in a house really doesn't fit your budget. I'll be upfront, especially if you're looking at a city that you, know, you can't get a three bedroom, two bathroom, a swimming pool, 10 acres in the middle of Dayton. It just doesn't really exist. Like for under 150,000, uh, that's what I see happening. So as much as we want to be honest with you, you be honest with us, just say, hey, I'm going to hold off for a while. Um, definitely let your real estate agent know so we're not hounding you, you know, once a week or some people even do it almost every single day. Uh, it'll save you time and headache, too. <laughs> Half your set is there a third brother named Chad Seagraves? If not, can that be me? There actually is a Chad. Like a, just like a cousin? I don't know. Oh. I think we're... Uh, um, like, hold on. Yeah, and I'm, I'm joking about the ASMR thing. Don't don't get offended about the ASMR. ASMR people, you have your community, love it, enjoy it. That's I'm more just joking about it. I have no clue who that is. That's Chad. <laughs> okay, but who is that? I, I don't know. <laughs> I just know there's a Chad. Yeah, Javier, you Javier. put in put in your application and uh, and we'll we'll see if we can add you to the instead of Property Brothers, we can do the Seagraves Brothers. Have you told your brother how long I've been proposing to you? Whoever this is has been literally saying, I will marry you for, I think, every every single video. But is that all you're doing? What? Like, is that all you're doing is just saying you're going to marry him? Oh. Because if I so, need a dowry. You need to put in some more work. Um, I if need you want, cattle. send me a message. I'll get you his address. You can send flowers. No. Um, no. Just got to be more proactive with it. I want cattle. I want uh, copper mines. I mean, a whole, I want assets is what I need as a part of this dowry. Who is older? Um, can you tell? Right here. 
is that the future? But see, you didn't have to shave. Or, like, you didn't have to buzz your hair. No, I just don't like my hairline, so I shave it. Mine's getting that way. It's gonna... It's coming. It's it's pulling back. Um, <laughs> Alan said, now I don't think you look similar. Uh, can you change... Sure, change your vote in the poll. Go for it. What happened? What flipped? Um, I don't know what uh, Michael's forget? comment was. On a the ASMR thing, oh. because I kept I kept saying, "Is this what you want?" <laughs> you like it? Oh my gosh! I don't want to see a clip of that on the internet later. Um, <laughs> man, we're getting lots of. Uh, we should do you, Foxy. You want to do a housing like a housing uh, bachelor? Although, well, that's just me. Housing Bachelor. Yeah, like the show The Bachelor, but it's housing related. I don't know. No, just you and I. You're married. married. He's married. Kayla, I'm going on The Bachelor. Sounds like Kayla's got some competition. Um, do ADUs ever bring the property bring down the property value? Uh, additional dwelling units. Have you ever seen that to be the case? I don't work them, so I don't know. Uh, I. I've never seen them necessarily bring down the value. Uh, the, if anything, they would bring up the value, but they can be harder to sell because normally it depends. But like, normally, anytime I've seen a property with an ADU, it uh, it's just for a specific <laughs> person buying. <laughs> <laughs> Are you laughing? Have you comment? No, Paul. Where? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. Kayla's gonna be mad. Put it up. See? Everyone likes it. That's what they that's what people want. Uh single brother, plenty of hair. Married brother, quite a bit less hair. <laughs> Coincidence. Um no comment. No comment. The facts. Although it seems like since you've um since you've had a child you are sleeping more. Absolutely. Yeah, not. Don't uh, it, it like goes up into that mic. That's what they want. The tap. <laughs> Is that what they want? Yeah. Is that what you want? Um. Yeah. What did Javier say? I can't believe they made fun of our favorite pastime ASMR. Kyle is canceled. Cancel me. Cancel me for the ASMR. See, everyone's saying that everyone's on board with the ASMR. They really, they really want it. Um. Is having a realtor important? Do they do more than help you locate houses to meet your criteria? And then I have a follow-up question for you as well. I wasn't listening. <laughs> uh, is having a realtor important? Do they do more than help you locate houses that meet your criteria? Or do you just open the door? Well, open I... the door, or I'm gonna throw rocks through your window. <laughs> or they open the door and you get a sweet fat check yeah, the only thing we do is we uh, request the house, we open the door, we shove paperwork in your face and sign it in the first house, you're under contract and we get paid. Uh, absolutely not. Um, we're looking into the houses, we're looking at the legal documents the state makes you put out, uh, the property disclosure, lead based paint, seeing if anything, anything's wrong with the house. Um, we're also doing, if you ask your agent saying, hey, can you kind of give me a CMA on it, just figure out what the homes are going for in that neighborhood or in that area. And also having an agent, um, they're going to be able to negotiate. Nobody wants, there's a lot of tensions that can happen in real estate. Um, so no buyer and seller really want to deal with each other directly because, yeah, because emotions get into it. Uh, so you kind of take business and emotion, mix the two, and it doesn't work out. I'm three. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so having somebody that represents you as a buyer, you're not, or at least here, at least with us at Remax, you're not paying to be represented by a buyer's agent. Your buyer's agent's getting paid by the seller. There's no harm in it for you. Uh, so why not have somebody who knows the business? They've sold more homes than you're gonna live in in your life, uh, theoretically, as long as you go with an agent that uh, is reputable. Uh, just don't go to somebody who like sells one home every five years because they're not gonna know how to the ins and outs of a contract. Uh, but they definitely have more benefit than what people believe. Yeah, um, and 
so that kind of brings up a question too of like so the realtor when you're when you're buyers when you're a buyer uh, like normally you're not paying for the realtor normally that's actually coming out of the, the seller is actually paying most of the time both realtors both their realtor and the buyer's agent your agent as well um, and so someone asked like uh, in a comment on another video so since the seller is paying the buyer's agent does the buyer's agent then work for the seller no we have duties to the buyers we have separate duties we're bound by you know the board and everything um, especially if you sign like a buyer's agency agreement really that agent represents you only and it's spelled out in the buyer's agency agreement that they work for you they don't work for the seller uh, if you feel like you're being taken advantage of in that way uh, definitely bring it up to the brokerage or the board of realtors around you Olivia and I have an ASMR. <laughs> no, there's legitimately an ASMR with it's Olivia on this channel. It's the T. Yeah. It's the T ASMR. Yeah. It's a real great time. It's uh, I think. like kitty kitty meow meow tea. That was like what? The name of the, the what are you talking of, about? The name of your tea was like kitty something. What? Oh, 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 oh. I know. You're, okay. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, I understand. Um, you were saying when I said it, call it a watt instead of WAP? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's the wet ST. Um, yeah, that was a good time. Hold on. See, people like the ASMR. Olivia's famous now. Is it doing it for you? Can they hear that? I don't know if people can hear that. character. Freak. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's an experience. Um, oh, there's somebody's question that I was gonna put up in here. <laughs> How come Chad Seagraves keeps coming up when I'm researching cash buyers? Are you guys involved? Yeah, it's the Seagraves Inc. is just buying up all of the uh, all of the homes with cash. We're the corporate cash buyers. We're the ones behind the empire. The the whole housing affordability problem. Um, hey guys, very understanding the loan aspect things, but in terms of looking for a house, what am I looking for? Siding, foundation, basement qualities, year built, etc., etc. main things to look for. This is a great question, especially because like, I am not a very, um, what's the right word to use? Very like uh, house maintenance kind of person. Mm -hmm. I can look up YouTube videos on how to install a luxury bidet, <laughs> and that's about that's about it. So, what what do you help buyers with as far as like looking at the condition of the home outside of just the price and how it looks? There's things where oh, and thanks allowed. Jennifer for the super chat. I forgot about that. There's things we're allowed to say. And there's things we're not allowed to say. Um, I'm obviously not a licensed inspector, um, so I can't say exactly you know how old a roof is. I can't say. You know the neighborhood's great. I can't say the condition of the foundation's great. I'm not allowed to say that at all. Really, it's dependent upon the inspector. But when you're going through a house, figure out beforehand what you're actually looking for in a house. Uh, talk to somebody who's bought one before. And as much as I hate to say it, um, you know, bring someone along, whether it's parents or grandparents. As agents, sometimes we get frustrated by that because things aren't the same as when they bought a house. Like, oh, I got this you know, three bedroom, <coughs> two bath. 3,000 square feet for 50,000, you know, 40 years ago. Um, stuff's not the same, but they understand, you know, the materials and what it's going through. But you're going to be able to tell if, when something's off, you're going to notice it. If the siding's all damaged, it doesn't take, you know, an inspector to know that, hey, something's going on with this. Or if there's obviously, you know, shingles missing, you're going to know there's something going on. But really that's where you would rely on getting an inspection. Um, a lot of people right now are waiving inspections, or at least they were a few months ago. I don't recommend it. Um, we have additional documents that we have buyers sign if they try to waive it and say, we don't want to do one. We don't want to be held liable for it. You kind of got burned by that, didn't you? I did, yeah. You, are you, do you feel comfortable talking about that with non-specifics? I mean, you didn't get no, burned. No. I didn't get burned. It, it was a first time home buyer. Um, they knew the sellers. They didn't find out that they knew the sellers until they went into the house. So they found a, <clears throat> they saw a picture of the, the seller and like, hey, I know you. Uh, so they contacted each other and they said, yeah, we're going to put an offer on the house. 
Um, obviously, I had nothing to do with that, which you know I'm not allowed to contact the sellers anyways because I represent the buyer. Um, the buyer decided they were going to waive inspections because they trusted the seller, which, like I said, friendships and business don't mix. It's the same thing with emotions and business. They moved into the house, said, you know, we don't want to do the inspections. We're fine with it. Moved into the house and found out that, and it's a small thing for us, but as a first time home buyer, you're like, oh, the whole entire house is broke. Uh, one of the, um, what's the spigot called? Spigot? Spigot. Yeah. For a while. What do you mean? The outside uh, garden hose spigot. I think it's a spigot. Yeah. Yeah. That was broke off or it didn't uh, work properly. And then there was a pipe under the sink that was leaking. So he contacts me and says, hey, aren't the sellers supposed to close it, disclose this on the property disclosure? I said, yeah, if they, know if, if they know of anything that's wrong with the property, they're supposed to disclose it. Um, but the problem is that at some points it's, can you prove that they knew about it? Um, in the grand scheme of things, it's less than a hundred dollar fix on all of that. Uh, but as a first time home buyer, that's definitely something they didn't want to hear about is something's broken on the house. Uh, it's crazy how many people expect a home to be pristine when they move into it. Like every home is going to have something, I promise. You yeah, even a, new, even a newly built home is going to have yeah. like issues. Yep. <laughs> Someone said, is anyone in your family loud and excited? Y'all so chill. Uh, not really. Um, is anyone in our family like really? I feel like Nicole sometimes is energetic. Um, no. Well, Stacy said I killed enough people today. Oh, she okay. She's talking about Call of Duty again. Yeah. I was like, what? I, I don't know if you should be saying that on here. Like, <laughs> Stacy, you play Rebirth. <laughs> somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna find out. Um, Finzi, thanks for the uh, the super sticker. I wish it would like pop up here, so instead it just gives the description that says hippo character's head pops out of water surrounded by his hippo squad. <laughs> so I do appreciate that, and Stacy, I appreciate the uh, the what's that little pair superhero? Um, let's see, do you service the Ohio area only, or do you service all fifty states? So uh, we have a team on the lending side for Ohio, Tennessee, and Florida, and then all of their states. Um, I work with a company called Find My Way Home to connect people with loan officers. Um, so if you go to my website, whenthehouseyoulove.com, I can connect you there, um, depending on what state you're in. And then uh, my brother is a realtor in Dayton, Ohio. Good old Dayton, Ohio. Um, so reach out if, yeah, no. At minimum, he has a YouTube channel in the description. And uh, yeah, what are we up to now? How many subscribers have we got now? I think I have three. Three? No, I will say. No, there's gotta be more than three. I think it's three. Ten. 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 Double ditch. Look at that. Double ditch. We went from one to ten. So my whole entire YouTube thing. Um, it's going to get monetized and <laughs> we're a little bit away. <laughs> my YouTube, I haven't really exactly figured out what I'm going to do with it. Um, I don't want to be coming on here and talking about real estate all the time because I don't want to be repetitive like Kyle. Um, so I kind of want to gear things more towards being a first time home buyer, some general maintenance things around the house, kind of mix in some real estate stuff. Um, so I'm not exactly sure where it's gonna go, but maybe I can get some suggestions. Yeah, I, I've, I know I've told you that. I think that you would be really good at that, especially with the, like the kind of like, what do I do once I move in Yeah. stuff? Cause I feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of information up to that point and then you move in and it's just kind of like, get there's done. nothing. Yeah, it's kind of like you, like, you mentioned like you had a kid and then they send you home and they're like, all right, <laughs> get out. Like it's a day old and they're like, okay, congrats. And they ask you like, did you watch any, you know, go to any classes, read any books? And we're like, no. And they're like, okay, here's this one day old kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're just like, don't bring shake it, your child. Bring it back in a week for a checkup. Yeah. Don't shake your child. And, yeah. and good luck. Um, Larry's got a non ASMR question. I can't see it. Are hard inquiries required? Okay, Are hard inquiries required to get pre-qualified? I uh, just went through my bank's online questionnaire and a loan agent, and they both asked to pull my credit report. Um, so, for most of the time, you're going to need to have your credit pulled to do a pre-qualification. And the reason why is kind of think of it like if they don't pull your credit score, what ends up happening is it's almost like there was a blanket thrown over top of your credit score. So they can kind of see what the score is, but it's not in full detail enough to actually give you a solid loan approval. So for instance, if you're talking with a lender, 
do you want them to actually say like, yeah, we think you could get approved for a mortgage? Or would you rather them saying, yes, you are approved for a mortgage? Um, because it's kind of that, you know, you can't have it both ways where you don't have an inquiry, but then you're expecting like a solid answer from a lender. Because they can't give you a solid answer unless you have a hard inquiry. Just know that a hard inquiry will only impact your score three to five points. It will bounce back within 30, 30 to 60 days and you have a 45 day window to have unlimited mortgage inquiries and it will only count as one inquiry towards your credit score. And Something don't, happened. Uh, what's that name? Stacy? Shay said Michael's melting pot channel. It's like a yin yang. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the mortgages, I've seen it definitely shop around. Um, Guys, especially when you see a loan officer who's a female who's young, you're going to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> don't stick with her just because she's attractive. Yeah, like no. there's so many. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's so many people out there who are um, like, if I was a female, I mean, I understand it. I'd be you know advertising a little bit, uh, but there are females out there, and not dissing on any females, but um, you can tell that some stuff that they do or that their advertisement posts, they definitely draw in some attention. Uh, and I see a lot of guys, Canceled. <laughs> <laughs> see a, a lot of guys stick with uh, a loan officer just because, um, you know, she's got some cleavage going in her business card or her online picture. Uh, it does happen every once in a while. Yeah. She's not going to marry you with that $8 and 84 cent ring. Uh, <laughs> so shop around because... <laughs> You know, getting a better rate is going to save you in the long term than... Uh, Come on in with the hard hits. Yeah. It no, happens. I, I agree with you. Um, in, in essence, like, don't don't work with a loan officer just because you find them attractive. Uh, because that does happen quite a bit. Uh, you had, like, a client that did that as well. Yeah. Um, where are you guys realtors? So I'm not a realtor. You're a realtor in Dayton, Ohio. Um, but we're both, in, uh, we're both in Dayton, Ohio, obviously, because we're on camera together. Um, it's a split screen, Zoom. Wendy said, I heard the mortgage inquiry should only be within 14 days. Uh, is that more realistic? Um, so it's actually 45, according to the CFPB, either the government body that actually oversees um, the extension of credit. So 45 is, uh, is what's going to be good there. Um, Stacy, I agree. Mm -mm -mm. Be smart, fellas. Do you, um, does TikTok show you the live streams all the time? They're shoving like the live streams in your face. Mm -hmm. And you know the people who do the live streams and they, uh, like, they're like really bad at doing live streams because they don't actually answer somebody's question. Their whole live stream, they're like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's green. <laughs> <laughs> or they're actually looking down, they're like, hmm, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so kind. Thanks for the flowers. Well, like, the, okay. the problem is it's on a slight delay too, kind of like this is. So... If you find a live that there's a couple hundred people in there, nobody knows what you're talking about. So if you're just saying yeah. like, thanks, or just answering a simple question without like reiterating what the question was, people are like, okay, what is she talking about? Yeah, it's the strangest thing where they're just like, yeah, it's green. Thank you, that's so kind. You're like, what? You keep blurry. And every time I am like, I tell TikTok, I don't show me, I don't wanna see any more of this. And then they're like, oh, you wanted more? <laughs> Here's more. And I, I don't know what to do. Honestly, I, I like trolling on there. I'll just listen to a stream. Uh, and I don't. You'll find some really weird people on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's consumed my life. Um, Esteban, not sure if this was asked already, but where do you see the housing market going in the next two to three years? Do you anticipate a crash? <sighs> oh, if we had the answer to this. I talked about it. Yeah, I know we did talk about that a little bit. It's so hard to say. Um, and you know, I feel like you can support like literally either side of the argument. Um, and so it really is It really is hard. I feel like one of the better things to do is like, I think we can kind of spend all day speculating and, but at the, at the end it's like, nobody actually knows what the real answer is. We can all have a guess based on what we see and all of our sources that we pull together. But I think really the best thing is like, what can I do directly in front of me to impact my situation with where I'm at? Um, so what can I do to make sure I'm prepared for even in a good market, things to go wrong or in a bad market? What can I do uh, when things get better? 
And so it's always just trying to see what can I do to prepare myself for the future and for the present moment. Um, I think rather than trying to time the market, because truly nobody knows, um, we can only just have like a solid inference. Making millions. Yeah, who do you think, do you think, I don't make millions, is that what you think? I make millions? Um, off to 84, yeah. That 84 is really, really uh, kicking in that millionaire fund. I don't want to answer this question because uh, you told me that story. Oh. Oh, I'll answer it. I'm not affiliated with Zillow. <laughs> <laughs> um, are Zillow recommended realtors great? Oh, okay. Well, I can exp I can explain this. Uh, I got one recommended to me. Blah, blah, blah. I found nothing, but when they speak in them, bragging about selling many houses. Okay, so that's not like a Zillow specific thing necessarily. Um, so what ended up happening is Zillow is a brokerage in a lot of markets, right? Um, so Zillow was like an online thing, right? They were more of kind of like a, a website of sorts. And then they've actually started moving into becoming a brokerage in a lot of local markets. And Zillow actually became a brokerage uh, in our local market as well. Um, and there was an agent who decided to uh, basically trash talk Zillow. Um, but agents aren't allowed to talk like badly of other agents um, because of their lo a problem with their local board. And also it becomes, I don't know what legal issue necessarily it is. I don't know if it's technically defamation, um, but basically Zill ended up sending him a cease and desist because you just can't, you can't defame other companies just because you're threatened by them. Um, when the house you love is terrible. Now that's different. Like it's different when it becomes like, there's a difference in like commentary and an opinion versus actually defaming. Yeah. And this person actually like made a video saying how bad they were and how they should be working with him. Well, if you can prove a loss of income from whatever you're saying, I think that's really where it's coming into play. Um, yeah. But as far as you know, your second part of the question there, uh, if somebody's bragging about how many houses they've sold, um, that's kind of a red flag to me. I understand being a buyer or a seller, you want to have somebody who's you know, reputable. They sell a lot of houses because uh, that's what they do. That's their job. But if somebody has to brag about how good they are, there's something hidden or there's something that they, there's something they're lacking on because that's the only thing they can say. I'm good is, at ASMR. I don't think so. But um, I give everyone so many tingles that they, yeah. I don't know what's like, next. There's agents around here who say, if you don't list with me, uh, then you're not doing it right. Um, I found yeah. that, you know what, they do get a lot of listings, and I wish I had a ton of listings side because it's a lot easier than driving around all the time. Uh, they got a lot of listings, everybody thinks I have to be with this agent. The problem is that agent doesn't communicate with their sellers or the buyer's agent, which makes the whole entire transaction a nightmare. They just get a listing, or the listing document signed, and they say, good luck, see you at the closing table. Uh, that's not an agent you want. I guarantee they sell a lot of homes, which is kind of like you're saying, uh, but they don't do any good yeah the amount of times I've talked with listing agents who have no clue what they're doing and they're like I've been doing this for 20 years and then they, they like barely sell any houses and you're like oh okay all right that doesn't really yeah. isn't really an indicator of you being good um, I don't even keep track did we answer that question fully I think so which one the one that we were just talking about Stacy says we're funny so we're handsome and funny and chill and bass voice and, and bass Bass voice. I don't think we're on different pitches, right? I think you just have a deeper like resonance than I do. Maybe. 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 <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, oh, boom, boom, boom. Is it okay to use your four hundred one k as a down payment? Um, as it really, I mean, this is more of like a broader question that I'd probably ask someone like a uh, a financial planner probably more than a lender. Um, you can use your 401k as a down payment. You could do a loan against it too if you want to. Just make sure that you're not uh, taking all away from your retirement account with no plan to refund it in the future if you are using that for a home. And so I do understand that like as home values continue increasing, it's more and more difficult to afford the down payment. Um, I just don't want you to take away from all of the money that you put into your 401k just to be able to purchase a home um, unless you just feel really confident in your ability to save for retirement in the future so because th th then what ends up happening is it's more of a, a shorter term decision is impacting us on a longer term and so that's the only thing i'd try to be um, 
I try to be careful of. Um, somebody had a question down here. What do you drive? We both drive a Honda Accord. Here's an Accord, right? Accord Sport. Accord Sport. Wow, bougie. It's those <laughs> realtor checks <laughs> pouring in. You Actually, got the, that Accord Sport. The Accord Sport is cheaper than the Accord, which is what you drive. Um, Called out. So I don't have the moonroof, sunroof. Uh, yeah, that seat warmer package was really was a killer. I don't have the little assist driving. Like, you can take your hands off the wheels or keep in the lane. I don't have that. But <laughs> there's an Accord Sport to get it right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so your your V two is a little bit faster than my V one. They're they're both fours, but yeah. No, and we both went from very big V eight cars to little Honda Accords. Yeah. You had a massive Dodge Ram. That thing was a nightmare. Dodge Ram. And I had a Yukon Denali, but there's better gas mileage though with the Honda, so. We both had Yukons. Um, someone asked if you sing. Do you sing? I just answered that, actually. Um, I don't think I've ever heard you sing. Quote, unquote, I you think do it now? I said... Hold on, let me go ahead and read it for you. You want to do it now? We can do some Cardi B. Can we put From on the, the top, uh, make it. Industry, baby. Some Lil Nas? Yeah. Lil Nas X? Um, no, I don't sing. I think what I put is, I would blow the speakers out, and the fire department would get called for a cat getting mangled. Um, it's pretty accurate. Nice. There's really nothing I can do. Um, what do you mean? Like special, can't sing, can't play an instrument. You guys are so used to Kyle like coming on here and ASMR and guitars and yeah, that's the and, yeah, that's that. Let's add that to my talents, ASMR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a talent. That's just I feel like I'm just provoking people who who like ASMR. <laughs> I mean, if you want to come see my grass, cut the grass good. You cut grass good. Yeah. Um, I need a list of lenders in Colorado. Um, I have a section where you can I can connect you with a loan officer on my website. I don't have like a list. I have like usually one connection in each state. Um, but you're welcome to do that if you'd like. Um, you said you hate the lender offer I got. I'd be curious to see, uh, or if you could share like what did you hate about it? What was what did you not like, or what was different than what you expected? Um, is it a good rate? I'm sorry, good idea to keep rates floating instead of locking with the current market. Um, so the only problem here is I've been trying to stay away from recommending the float versus the lock thing, just because it um, it opens up some uh, legal problems for me if I tell people to do something and then it ends up costing them money. Um, so what I would say here, if you like it, lock it. And I'd leave it there. It's like a song. Beyonce song, right? If you like it, lock it. If you like it, put a ring on it. Put a put a seven ninety nine eight eleven. What was it? Eight dollars and eleven cent ring. Eight eighty four. Put an eight eighty four ring on it. Is um, what are the best lenders to use for a subprime loan? There aren't subprime loans anymore. Uh, they're not classified in that way, so I'm not sure. Like, you might have to clarify what you mean by subprime. If you're looking, talking like non-QM. Um, oh, oh my gosh, it just escaped my mind. HomePoint, Angel Oak for non-QM. Um, if you're talking about like, uh, maybe harder to qualify credit, th if that's what you're talking about by subprime, Carrington is an option. I'm not aware of a lot of other lenders that will go down to a 500 score on FHA, VA, and USDA other than Carrington. Um, but just know that they can be... A little, uh, a little difficult to work with, at least in my experience. Are your most of your people from California? I believe thirteen percent of people are from California. Where's your majority? California. That's your majority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I'm pretty sure. In California, whoever's there, um, how many homes? If anybody's in the home buying process, how's the market out there compared to, you know, say March to now? Are you having to see more houses, put more offers out? I'm curious how California is, because I hear it's crazy. I'll, oops, I had that one. There we go. Stacy, I like Stacy. You're doing a great job, Stacy. Her mom's great. <laughs> First of all, I was like, how do you know Stacy's mom? And then I got it. Known as Foxy. Uh, hi, gentlemen, I currently serve gentlemen. 
Uh, I currently serve in the active duty military and I currently have 40,000 saved in the bank. Awesome, I have three years left on the contract. What should my priorities be for the next three years? That's a wonderful question. Um, the first thing that I would look at, so, and I'm imagining with three years left on the contract, are you maybe not um, not wanting to purchase? So you, you still can purchase. Uh, even if you're in the military and even if you're like planning on having like you know, PCOSing to other places in the US um, depending on where you're at I know there's there's just so many different things that can be happening in there um, whether you're overseas or you're in the US um, you still can purchase um, and what happens for a lot of uh, veterans is they will actually purchase where they're stationed and then they'll live in that and then when they end up having a permanent change of station somewhere else they will actually rent out that home and then have somebody else take over the maintenance for it. So that's an option. Um, but as far as priorities, the main thing that I would look at, is, so you have you have this money saved up, fantastic. I would see, is that in line with the down payment that you want on a future home? Um, because depending on what type of home you're purchasing, if you're purchasing a $400,000 house, uh, you know, is that, so that's 10% down, that's fantastic. Are you wanting a larger house, a smaller house? Um, the other thing I would consider in there is what is your debt situation like? So do you have uh, any other loans? Do you have credit cards? Do you have an auto payment? I would try to take care of those because I think that's just going to add a lot of like extra cash flow to you monthly and a lot of freedom of not having to pay or worry about those debts as you move forward and then eventually purchase a home and then take on that larger amount of debt there. So that's what I would focus on at the moment. Um, other than paying off debt, the only other thing that I would think of as a priority is possibly what you are thinking about doing next after the military. Um, if if that's what you're doing, if you're deciding to not extend or not uh, renew a contract or sign a new one, then maybe just start thinking about what would you be interested in doing uh, after that? Where, where would you like to live? Um, you have, I think, plenty of time to kind of explore that and see what works for you. What do you think? Me? Yeah. I don't know anything about the lending side. I am not the guy to ask about that. Neither do I. I saw that Tennessee was hot. Who else said? Uh, one said they were in California. No, Tennessee is horrible. Arizona's hot. Got two Arizonas, Stacy and Shay. Um, when shopping for new... Did we answer this? Did we talk about this? I don't think we did. Uh, no. When shopping for a new construction home, is it better to go with our sales rep and lenders or with a realtor and a lender they provide? I can answer the lender side. As far as the lender, I still shop it around with other lenders, but most of the time, the builder's lender tends to have an offer that usually cannot be beat by another lender. Um, and usually, if you work with a builder's lender, you tend to get credits on the purchase as well. It's not always the case. Um, but I know anytime I've uh, gone up against another builder's lender, it's almost impossible for us to compete with their quotes just because they usually are working with the builder. Um, and so it's just hard because they're giving credits on both sides. It's a mafia. <laughs> Is it a mafia? It's a mafia. They're all, they got slicked hair and they're like going down the alley and they're like, go and get them. Yeah. Uh, as far as an agent, new constructions can be weird. Um, I'm trying to think of how to best go about it. You can definitely have an agent to represent you on a new build. Uh, the problem you run into is a lot of new build companies aren't paying a buyer broker commission. Um, so as much as we want to see our client have a house, a lot of times the the builder isn't going to pay the agent. Um, so it's like, well, I'm not going to write an offer or write a contract uh, because then all of a sudden I just put myself into legal paperwork and say something happens where you have to go to court down the line, I never got paid to all of a sudden have to pay for this representation. Um, so some construction companies are offering a flat fee really to a buyer's agent. Um, I've seen some of them kind of be petty to me, even on like a 400, I think it was 414, yeah, 414,000. I think they were offering like 2,000 or $2,500, um, which obviously around here, it's 3% buyer broker commission, uh, which is, kind of kicks the horse while it's down, but anything's better than nothing, but you can definitely have an agent. Um, it really just depends on who the builder is. 
<laughs> Honey Bun said, what brother will win in an arm wrestling match? Where I'm see that? Right here. I'm not I'm not doing this on camera. I think he'd win. Um you would I don't win. Know. Yes. Yeah, you would win. Kyle's gotten pretty strong. I used to be able to just beat on him. Been bulking up, got them gains. <laughs> I used to beat on him. Um and then I think he just got so mad that he just started working out secretly. And how yeah. he just hear that arm just getting old. Yeah. Neo Soul said hi Kyle's fine brother what's that fine uh, what's the proper turnaround time for a realtor to respond with an update regarding the status of my bid or information about another home I text my realtor at 1 p.m. with uh, the being so fast I mentioned the market being so fast um, what do you think is a good turnaround time if they put in an offer is that what the question is um, yeah status of a bid on your offers that you're putting out, there's going to be an expiration, at least in ours, I'm guaranteeing they're in all the other states. There's going to be an uh, expiration date and time that you guys are going to have on there. Um, so if you, I always ask my client, when do you want the expiration to be? Because really it's dependent upon how, what they say. I mean, I'm, I'm just there to kind of coordinate the transaction. I'm not going to fill in the blanks for you. Um, so if you fill in an offer, you know, today on Thursday and you write it, it's going to expire Friday at 5 p.m., if Friday at 4.30, 5 p.m. rolls around, you haven't heard anything from your agent, I would definitely reach out. But as far as me for an agent, I keep my clients up to date like, hey, they opened the offer or, hey, they responded. They're going to go with another, you know, they're going to go with another offer. I'll tell you that up front. Um, so I don't know your exact circumstance, but I would say, you know, if you want to check every day, as <laughs> it can be annoying, um, but don't check every hour because we'll let you know. I'm in Austin, Texas. The market here is wild. Austin, I hear, is exploding. Uh, it's, not, it's like the next Phoenix. I feel like everyone was like moving into Phoenix, and now it's like Phoenix is getting full, and everyone's going to Austin. That's probably not exactly how it's working, but I hear they're moving out of California. The, ca to... the California exodus. Going All those Austin. California cash buyers. <laughs> that reminds me of the SNL skit, the Californians. Um, USDA home loans are awesome. I am a big fan of USDA, and uh, USDA is common around here, but unfortunately, it's not in other areas. I'm finding out because a lot. Of, I'm talking to a lot of people who are saying their lenders have no clue what a USDA loan is, which I don't know blows my mind. Um, Did you know? Uh, I don't think Brookville is considered Brookville and. Lewisburg, I don't think are considered USDA, are they? I would imagine Lewisburg is. Brookville, probably not. Do you recommend living in Dayton? Um, not really. <laughs> Victoriously Shea, <laughs> Shea said, no more people in Phoenix, please. Uh, Phoenix is so hot. When I went there, it was a 114. Ooh, not trying to get all sweaty. Just don't, I mean, there's nothing special in Dayton. I mean, it has its own charm. But I think really the only way people end up here is their job moved them or they were born here or raised here. There's I no think, there's no like, oh let's go to let's go to Dayton. It's such a great place. I mean there's good stuff, but nothing. I've been kinda of thinking about moving to Columbus. I mean, you're gonna pay double on your rent. Yeah. But there's not a lot in Dayton. There's nothing in Columbus. There's Columbus is way better. There's way more stuff to do in Columbus. If you want to spend money. Well, you got to spend money to make money. <laughs> no. I'm, apparently, I'm draining all my cash on my Honda Accord. The That moonroof really set me back. You get those seat warmers in there and the auto start, and, like, you know, I can't have to keep a tight budget now because I didn't go with the sport model. Um... Yeah, Oscar said Nashville. You have to offer fifty thousand over asking to be considered. It's a real bummer. Na Nashville is another crazy market. Um, rent, the rent there is insane. Yeah, and uh, and Brentwood, I believe, uh, is that that neighborhood is that west of Nashville. That is like starting price. I feel like now is somewhere around nine hundred. Um, might be it might be higher. 
because I feel like I only looked probably maybe a year ago. Um, what's the biggest city in Ohio? I'm pretty sure Columbus is the biggest city. Would it be Cleveland or Columbus? I have no idea. It depends on what you call the I biggest, don't... like most people or big area wise. I think Columbus is bigger. Is it huge? It's huge. Huge. Um, You're really far back. I know. It's so hard to keep up. I drive up to Dayton just to get out of Cincinnati. <laughs> Interesting. I feel like everyone in Dayton like <laughs> drives down to Cincinnati to get out of Dayton. Or at least um, the outlet. What's that outlet called in, uh, by Westchester? Is it is it a Cincinnati outlet? Maybe. Liberty? Hmm. I'm working with a national mortgage company. Should I still have a lawyer look over my loan paperwork? I think you can. Um, and so in the, the states, so I'm currently just licensed in Ohio, um, but I was licensed in Ohio, Tennessee, and Florida and doing loans there. And I had only had one client ever uh, use an attorney and it was kind of pointless. Uh, that was my personal opinion. Don't take my advice on that. Not legal advice. But um, like it, she just didn't do anything. Like she, we sent, she wanted us to send, like the lawyer was in, or attorney was in direct contact with me. She was like, send me the loan paperwork, please. And I sent it to her and she was just like, okay, looks good. <laughs> what? And anyway, like if the attorney wanted, it's not like the attorney can have something be changed. They can't say like, we want this to be different. A loan company is not going to change their already pre-vetted paperwork. Like mortgage companies have whole teams of attorneys making sure that their paperwork is the way that they want it. So they're not going to change it. The only thing I think they would be able to do is either help you on the contract side or tell you not to sign something on the mortgage side. I, I don't know. I don't know that uh, I have experienced a benefit in working with an attorney and maybe I'm wrong on that. Um, but if that's something that would make you feel more comfortable, feel like there's a more unbiased opinion on your side, then I would say go for that. Um, if that's gonna help you feel like you're in more control and have more confidence over the, uh, the situation. It's wrote into our, our offers too. I mean, it's going to be in the contract that it, it's the buyer's own obligation to consult an attorney if they need to. Um, I only had, I think I've had one person do it so far, but it's however you feel comfortable. Why don't they know about USDA? My realtor had no clue. Uh, I don't know. I, I think, so USDA only works in what's a rural area and don't think of rural as like farmland because rural can actually work in a lot of pop, like pretty populated cities. The Amish. Um, yeah, it's not just for like Amish areas. Uh, so it's more on the population density than anything else. And so for a lot of places, you can extend your commute by five, 10 minutes and be in a USDA eligible area for 0% down. Um, there also is an income limit. So it's important to keep in mind, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's not popular in that area or, you know, and, and there are a lot of areas where like, for instance, around here within an hour radius, you could probably extend your commute by, if you're looking in one area, extend it by probably five to 10 minutes and be in a USDA eligible area. Now, if you're talking about like a bigger city, extending that same geographical range is not a five to 10 minute commute extension. It might be closer to like a 30 minute extension for you. So that could be the case. But um, even around here, there are a lot of people not super well versed in USDA, which is kind of, uh, kind of unfortunate. Because um, there is a really good loan program if uh, if that's something that you can qualify for, um, and a lot of people just don't don't know about it, unfortunately. But that's the whole point of this channel: be more educated so you can make a better choice, and it's not all up to the loan officer or the realtor you talk to. Um, you can have a little bit more control of what you're doing. Um, there is a USDA eligibility map that you can look up to. Um, did someone leave? Oh, Alan, thanks for the super chat. I don't see a question here from you, but um, if you have a super chat, a super chat is where you can, um, it, so it like highlights like this. Yeah. And so they can put a question in if they want to, um, to kind of throw it to the, the top of the queue. Hmm. Um, so that way, cause again, like I can't answer every single question here. Um, as much as some people think I can, I, I don't know. So basically it's a pay to play to be on this YouTube. Like they have to pay mm, to get their question answered. Not really, but it, it's, some of it is like, it does put it to the front of the line. Cause I, again, I, 
I mean, you see how many questions I can't answer it, unfortunately. Like, yeah. I want to, <laughs> but we'd be here forever. Um, 114 is dumb. I'm not sure. Is that, a, is that an area code? What's 114? What's that? I don't know. Someone said 114 is dumb. Uh, Alan, okay. Please, please, please keep telling people not to move to Phoenix so I can possibly someday think about maybe considering looking at thinking <laughs> of affording a... I think this is my favorite comment that I've seen in a while. Maybe please, I should, maybe I don't. Please, please keep telling people not to move to Phoenix so I can possibly someday think about maybe considering looking at thinking of affording a home here. <laughs> oh, man. I I completely understand, Alan. I know where you're coming from. What do you I wish it was say? easier. What do you have to say about... Um, no, you didn't screw it up, man. That was funny. I liked it. What are people saying about the really needing two incomes? I mean, I've seen a lot of people <coughs> get, you know, get approved and get a house just on one income, just one person. D. Thomas, I'll answer this in just a second. Um, like, is it more difficult to for two incomes or less difficult? There's a few that are saying, you know, it's it's hard to get approved for anything worthy, you know, if you're just one income. Um, yeah. So how do, from your experience, where do you see, um, obviously you see more people applying for loans. Um, are you seeing that people are getting it by themselves or they have to have somebody? What do you see? Around here, it's a lot easier to, well, the median purchase price here is what now? Like 160 for first time? I put it even lower. I think our average first or just, home buyer. just median home price in general. Okay, yeah, one sixty. Yeah, median home price around here is like it's crazy low. Uh, median home price here is like a down payment for California. So now keep in mind, like our median income is also lower compared to really high cost of living areas, but it's not significantly lower than like the U.S. average. I'm pretty sure we're pretty on par with like U.S. median income. Um, so. It, there are a lot of single people who purchase homes here uh, very easily. Um, but that's not the case when you start getting into more competitive areas. And the hard part too is like, you know, those 150, 150, 180,000 dollar range is crazy competitive. Um, so you see people who even have the, the price range that's a lot higher mm -hmm. moving down into that price range because that's, well, they're just looking for a home that they can, just any home to buy. Um, I think it's expectations too. Right. People come in to, they, they want to buy their first home and they say, you know, I want all this stuff like I talked about before, three bedroom, two bath, full basement. I want five acres. I want a pool, a detached garage and an attached garage all for 130,000. I can't tell you the amount of texts that I see when I'm asking somebody, Hey, what are you looking for in a home before we start the search? They're looking for like an exorbitant amount of things. Um, and you can't just expect that. So you may get approved and there's plenty of people who get approved on the single income. Um, it's not like you have to have, you have to drag somebody with you or I guess go and buy a, a Walmart ring, like a $8. Well, not here. Ring pop. Right. Yeah. But, but as far as here, I mean, there's plenty of homes. I think our starter home average is between 80 to 120 around in this area. I think when you start hearing yeah. About second time home buying, you really go in the 140, 180 range, um, possibly going up to the 200s, just depends on the job that you have. Right. But I think that's kind of our average here, which like you talked about in California is um, like this office for a whole entire house. Yeah, and I, I am working on a video about this to kind of help. Um, I mean, there's not a lot that I can help necessarily, uh, unless, I don't know. We are we gonna create a? Should we create a dating app for people looking to buy a home so they can afford it? <laughs> hey, that's an idea. That's an idea. Wait, this is um. We pair people. Sixty day fiance, but sixty day like homeowners. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's the golden ticket. I think we do we do like a dating thing for people who need help with affordability. Um, no, it it really is. It is a big problem. Um, as especially as homes continue to increase drastically in their price as they continue appreciating at these like double digit numbers, um, which it seems like we're probably gonna hit again this year. It just is becoming increasingly out of reach for single people. And I know I know there are gonna be people who, who, who complain, they're like, I'm married and whatever, we have dual income and we still can't afford it. Yes, I know, everyone is struggling. But like for single people especially, 
there it's a lot harder to qualify um, because the moment you add in a second income, even if somebody has ex those debts too, it just skyrockets your ability to purchase a home. Um, and so I unfortunately don't have a solution to that. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't really have a solution. Well, I we wish have I did. our first contestant on the show. It's Angela. Angela. Angelica. Angelica. Sorry. Angelica's signing up. Um, I do want to get to D. Thomas. I love these super sticker descriptions. Pair character turning around and waving his hand, saying, "Hey, you!" While lowering his glasses. Is he like showing his butt like this? Like, I hope not. Well, what it actually looks like is like mm, that. Oh, it is. He's shown his he's shown his butt. Um, Got a donk. Are conventional loans for single family houses underwritten with your W two income? Yeah, they can be. You can do W two ten ninety nine, um, or if you're self employed, any version of self employed. Uh, I'm trying to think. Was there anything else in that question for single family homes underwritten? Yeah, if you have W two income, W two income is one of the easiest incomes to for underwriters to approve. Um, the easiest is actually like social security. So any, any sort of fixed income like social security or pension is a breeze because it never changes. W-2 is also very consistent. So that's, um, it is a, a really good income to have for conventional. Um, when is it best to take an FHA loan versus conventional? What scenario? So conventional loans, uh, the minimum qualification is 620. However, in between 620 and 679 ish, usually FHA sometimes tends to be. I, sh I said usually and sometimes. Often usually FHA sometimes I know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about the affordability. Uh, anywhere between 620 and 679, I would also get a quote for FHA. Now FHA is not a loan that I'm going to hold for a long period of time, but usually there's this period of time where somebody, let's say, they have a 620 and maybe they qualify conventional, but you could also qualify FHA. I've often seen FHA have better uh, terms for the first maybe five years and then have that person refinance into a conventional loan in the future. Usually is a better cost saving strategy than going with a higher interest rate conventional loan because conventional loans will penalize you anywhere below a 680 most of the time. Um, and it depends with some lenders even up higher to like 720. Below that, you can have what are called price adjustments put onto the rate where the interest rate's higher because you had a lower rate. And the main reason why is if we're thinking about this is like somebody with a 630 score to a conventional loan, that's on the low end. But on an FHA loan that goes all the way down to 500, that's on the higher end of the FHA side. So you're a better buyer or better borrower on the, to the FHA than you are to conventional. So in those instances, if you're in that credit score range, I would get a quote for both. See if your lender can do a long-term cost analysis on them and to see like what at what point would the conventional loan be better for you. Some good questions coming in. Um, I know you're still up there. Long Beach viewer, over the years I've bought three places and sold two places in California. Still learned something new from you both today. Awesome. I'm glad you learned something. Thank you. Um, I hope it was you learned a little bit about my spot on TikTok live impression. I hope that's what you learned. Thank you. Yeah, it's from Abercrombie. Thanks. Thanks for the flower. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Someone you mention your shirt, your shirt. Huh? Someone mentioned your shirt. My shirt. You were showing your shirt. What are you talking about? You said Abercrombie. Oh, oh, oh. No, I was just I was doing an impression of the TikToks okay. where like you don't know what question they're asking and they're. Oh. Um, is the rate of two point eight seven five good? Uh, so here I got I got something for you. You ready for this? So if I go to, I should probably press the right button. So if you go to winthehouseyoulove.com, this is my website, click this little drop down, go to rate checker, and you can use this tool to compare your interest rate against where the average is. So put in your credit score, choose the state that you're in. We're gonna go, uh, let's act like we're in Arizona because no one wants us in Arizona. Let's say you're, oh, okay, we're, I'm not gonna go drastic. 900,000. I was gonna do it for a joke, but then I realized there'd probably be nothing that would show up. Um, let's say you're doing this, 300,000, 30,000 down, fixed rate, 30 year conventional loan. 
So it will tell you in Arizona, most lenders are offering rates at or below 3.125%. So that's a great way to check. I also have a today's rates option and it will show you that just averages, not based on credit score or location, but just averages for 30 year, 15 year. It also shows FHA, you can put VA in there, you can put USDA in there if you want. Um, I'm sorry, I was wrong. It looks like you can do uh, credit score. So if I wanted to see a 30 year, um, let's say less than a 20% down payment with a 740 score, it's gonna show us the trend of in interest rates and I could look at that over the past month. It's fancy. And see what interest rates are doing there. So that is what I would do to see if a rate is good. Much better than my generic opinion. <laughs> yeah, Arizona has a winter, is that a thing? Um, Ahmed, would you ever recommend getting something sight unseen with a reputable realtor? My horizon is in the next 18 months, but currently in Taiwan until January 2023, but would want to uh, use FHA on a multifamily home. How do you feel about the sight unseen? Because I feel like this was a big thing too with like when, when COVID first started happening, there were a lot of agents who were doing like virtual yeah. showings. Like they'd FaceTime their buyer and walk through the house and stuff. Yeah. Um, can you say the C word on here? Or do you have to like put a little- <laughs> What C word? <laughs> <laughs> the vid. Oh yeah, you can say COVID. Okay. Oh, I, they like, I was going to say, like, geez, what's, <laughs> how does that, what kind of C word are you wanting to use for this? Um, you can, yeah, I you, thought at one time it, like, did something. At one time you couldn't say, if you said COVID, it demonetized you. Okay. But so, you can now. So when COVID hit, really that's <laughs> <laughs> when the C hit, um, that's when a lot of virtual showings started happening. Um, some people did Zoom. I, if they had an iPhone, it just made it easy to do FaceTime showing. Um, I had no problem doing that. What I think, what I found to be was that you're just kind of going around a house and the person can't get the full aspect of what they're looking at. Like you're only looking through a lens. They can't see, you can't spin around 360 and do show the ceiling, the walls, and you can't see in detail what they're actually looking at. Um, I would say the people that I've been, that I did those for were investors to where they don't care about is something messed up or they know they're gonna have to dump money into it anyways. So they don't care if there's holes in the drywalls or the flooring. You know, you can feel like it's got some some shaking in it or it's got some bowing. You obviously can't see that from a FaceTime call or a Zoom call. Uh, so I think that's kind of the danger of if you're just trusting an agent and hoping that they're telling you about what's going on. Um, but a lot of investors I see using this just because we have a lot of California, Arizona, going back to Arizona again. Mm -hmm. um, but I really see with investors, not too much with, um, like a home buyer who's wanting to live in it as their primary. Um, but if you have someone in the area that you trust or you have friends, send them in the house with the agent. They won't have a problem with it. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like it'd be so hard to gauge. If it was an investment, it would make sense. And so it sounds like that since you're looking at like a multifamily kind of going house hacking investment route, that might be okay. I just know that like if there was a, if there was a house that like I'm wanting to live in as like, this is where I'm gonna be for a while, just seeing it on video, wouldn't no. be enough for me to like get a no. feeling of the home. Um, but again, yeah, if you're doing more like the investment side, then, then great. Um, I just see too yeah, many repercussions. Like, oh, my agent didn't show me this in the video. Um, and all it takes is, you know, what if someone records that, that video call and they didn't show something that the agent might have not seen. Like if there was a leak somewhere, and obviously we have to disclose, you know, if we see a leak, you know, coming through the, Coming through the drywall, I can't say that it's from the roof. Um, I can't say that where exactly it's coming from. I can just say, hey, there's something appearing right here on the ceiling. Uh, Cause I'm not, again, I'm not an inspector. Um, but if I happen to miss that, I could see where there'd be some legal repercussions. Yeah, and then you get mad at your agent, you call your agent the C word, and then it's all over after that. <laughs> COVID. The vid. Um, Network Engineer Academy. Uh, I think I've seen you here before, so welcome, welcome back. Um, I applied for a mortgage 
a loan with two different lenders and got approved with both. Can I get both loans and get two different houses? Ooh, which one's attractive? <laughs> yeah, which loan <laughs> officer is more attractive is the real question. Um, <laughs> okay. People who just joined are like, what in the world? Yeah, uh, you 100% can get a can get two loans get and buy two homes. Um, but they can't be at the same time and they can't not know about it. So you can close homes back to back. It, it's a real pain to do uh, timing wise and logistics wise, but you can do it. But also keep in mind, uh, so are both of these homes going to be investment properties? Is one going to be a primary residence and one's going to be an investment property? Um, so they can't both be like, I'm not saying that you're inferring this, but it can't be a, hey, they don't know about each other and I'm gonna trick the system. Um, it's called mortgage fraud. You will end up in jail. They will find out about it uh, because they don't like to. They don't like those things happening. So, if you are wanting to say I want to purchase two homes at pretty much the same time and have two loans, talk, you can do. It's probably better to do it with the same lender. I don't know why you would do two different lenders. Do it with the same lender so they can keep track of everything. Um, but they'll have to include whatever one's going to be the investment property in your debt to income ratio. And so you can always close on the first one and then close on the second one, kind of back to back of sorts. Um, but they do have to be considered with each other. Anything outside of that does become mortgage fraud. And Pam, uh, Pam had a buyer who bought a house and within, I don't know, a month or two bought another house. That was kind of a weird situation. And I said, you know, talk to the mortgage company, make sure that he's- A primary residence or investment? I don't know. Hmm. One of them was going to, I think the new one was going to be a primary. Or one was primary and then it turned into an investment and then something else moved on. Yeah, so in that case, you would have to like, it is mortgage fraud if you buy a primary residence and then a month later want to buy another primary residence and you don't do anything about it. You have to live in that home for one year before you don't have to refinance it into an investment property. The only way to buy a primary residence and then one month later to buy another primary residence is you have to refinance this one into an investment property or purchase this new one as an investment property. Um, you can't have two primary residences at the same time unless you've lived in one for one year, then it kind of seasons out of its occupancy requirement. I do um, have a question. Sorry to cut out on the, uh, everybody else has some questions. I never thought about it. You have it. to super chat to ask me a question. Okay, I'll send you a dollar. <laughs> um, for the people in Arizona and California, I understand what they don't know won't hurt them, but how does Airbnb come into effect with if somebody has a primary residence, do the lenders care at all if you're renting it out? Because wouldn't that be an investment at that point? Uh, as long as you live in it, you can do Airbnb. But is there a certain amount of days? So if I rent out my if I rent out my house and I'm in a hot I'm in a hot city, and I rent it out for three weeks out of the month. Where are you living? Where's like I don't know. You camper. Um, if you're living in, you have to live in the home as your primary residence, and so like. I mean, the actual requirements of all that would have to be taken in court to actually like see, are you claiming it as a primary residence? Primary residence would be like, your mailing address is there, all of your mail is going there. Uh, well, that was the same thing. Um, like you're filing taxes there, you're living in the home the majority of the time. So it has to actually be treated as your primary residence. If that's the case and you're like, hey, I'm going on vacation or I'm going on a trip for three weeks, I'm gonna rent this out on Airbnb, then that's fine. And you can also like rent out rooms. You're allowed to have a primary residence and rent out other rooms, and that's fine. Um, you can actually purchase a secondary home primarily for Airbnb. As long as you live in the secondary home um, a bit of time out of the year, it's still classified as a secondary home. Um, so does that answer it? Yeah, I just never knew how it worked. Yeah, Airbnb could be a great option for the right person. Um, I would personally hate having somebody walking in my house doing Airbnb, but the Airbnbs I've done where it's been someone's room is actually pretty chill most of the time. Um, usually they always make like a nice breakfast for me. It's kind of weird if they come in your room, like. <laughs> well, they don't come in the room. They you're little boy. Yeah, they tucked me in. I was like, mm, I, I got you a bacon and eggs. Give you, I'll give you five stars if you tuck in my feet. I don't do that. Is that too far? It might have been too far. <laughs> Cool. Well, we're coming up on uh, two hours. Let's see. Blinded by society. Do realtors provide a home inspector? Oh, this is a great question. Or is that something you would hire yourself buying a home 
that has huge issues always gets my anxiety going. Do we provide a home inspector? Like, would you do you have someone that you would give to them, or would they should do they need to find somebody on their own? So we are absolutely allowed to give recommendations. Um, we can say, you know, here's a list of home inspectors for you. We are not allowed to say to just give you one to one home inspector and say, here you have to use them. Uh, we are actually not allowed to do that at all. I think officially now you have to give out at least in Ohio you have to give out three. If you're going to send a list. You have to send out three home inspection companies. Really? Yeah. That's a state requirement? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Uh, three home inspection companies, and I believe that uh, we had a meeting on it. They have to be licensed and insured. Um, so if you just send somebody who's an inspection company and they may not be licensed and insured, it could fall back on you. Um, so there are people who don't send any recommendations at all because they don't want the kickback, uh, which I understand. But as far as you know, if your agent says, hey, I can send you a list, definitely do your research. Don't feel like you have to go with those three. Do your own reviews, ask people, because I guarantee you know someone who's bought a house. Uh, figure out who they used, read some Google reviews, you'll find stuff on Yelp, uh, the BBB, definitely look on there. Um, yeah, I would definitely put your faith in a home inspector. Uh, don't put all your faith in it because sometimes they, they don't know what they're doing sometimes because they're not specialized. They know a broad spectrum. Um, I have somebody that they thought was a plumbing leak coming from a shower, uh, but it ended up being an AC system. Um, the plumbers don't, or the home inspectors don't know that. They just know where the water's coming from and they suspect that it's coming from this. Uh, so believe in them, but don't put too much faith, but they're there for a good reason. Yeah, I think that happens for a lot of inspections is you have like a general home inspector and then they can identify issues that you need like a specialized home inspector for. So for instance, if there's like a fireplace, um, that's active and is uh, like normally you would need that inspected uh, at least around here I imagine that's like a national thing too you have to get a uh, separate inspection like an inspection company will do it but as far as fireplaces uh, they're never yeah. warranted nobody wants the responsibility of it uh, so you have to get a separate you know chimney inspector same with septic um, there's different inspectors for different things uh, but or you have like structural issues or yeah a home inspector is really just a general um, just kind of see what's going on with the property. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, let me see if I can now. Michael's YouTube channel is down in the description. We're up to 18 subs now. So that's what we were at one. So we're, I feel like, oh, we, I feel oh, like we were, we're at one. Yeah. 19. Oh boy. Can we get to 20? Can we get to 20? Somebody's got to do it. I might be able to take Kyle to dinner. Somebody's got to do the 20. Can we do 20? Refresh, refresh, refresh. Now refresh. You're, being, you're being like the guy you see on YouTube. Refresh. With like, refresh. Guys, hit the screen. Smash that. Hit the subscribe. screen. Hit the screen. Come on, keep clicking. Who's older? He's older by three years. You're uh, 28? Yeah. Just turned. I'm 20, 25. You know it's funnier than 24? 25. 20. There we go. 20. How do you see that? You just. Oh, it's over there on yours. Where your microphone booms in the way. Oh, uh, but yeah, I'm older. Except for twenty, your birthday will be coming up. But yeah, in the Who full else? end of the year, it's or this it's three apart. Twenty five. Oh, At this pace, well, let's keep it going. What is that? Twenty five. Twenty five. So, um, yes, two thousand eight. How do you say this? Ash Ashinika. Ashinika. Refresh. I'm number twenty three. Angelica. Awesome. Well, cool. Thank you all for joining. Um, go ahead and subscribe to 27. Uh, oh. His man, I should be. I should ask for subscribers if that's the way this goes. <laughs> We're partying tonight. You want to go on my channel? <laughs> my subscribers will come to you. If you uh, want to shoot, shout you out. No, he's not 35. He's 28. Did I say 35? Uh, I don't know. Um, but cool, thank you all for joining. We're gonna do a live stream uh, next week, probably with Danielle, who's a loan officer in uh, the office that he works in. Um, so hopefully we can answer some more mortgage questions there, but um, thank you all again for joining. Hope you all have a wonderful night, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, see ya.